Hallelujah. It's always a blessing. You cannot imagine how excited I am every week to bring us the word of the Lord. And you see, as a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or to build an empire for yourself. As a true minister of the gospel, your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power, the life, and the glory of God. Let's look at the scripture. Jeremiah 23 verse 4 Jeremiah 23 Verse 4. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. It says, And I will set up shepherds. over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity. is a transfer. This is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word. That while you are sitting right now listening to me, there is a spiritual transfer. Something is entering your spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. It says, And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Let me tell you something. Without the ministration of the spirit, every other thing we are doing is just noise. It is the ability to convey spiritual realities. Not just the English. Not just the grammar. Are you getting my point now? But there is an impartation upon your spirit man. And that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught. Without the spirit backing the word, there is no supply of grace to become. It says, as many as believed in him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them what? Power to become. Not power to hear. Power to become. Meaning that when the word of God is taught in truth, it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good, it should activate something in your spirit and make you become it. Because the word of God is not a thing. The Greek word word is logos. Right? And Jesus the word is called the living logos. He's a person. You can listen to my message, the living logos. Meaning, the ultimate desire of God is not for you to learn scripture. The ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture, light will enter you to become an epistle yourself a written epistle the apostle says hallelujah so this is what we are here to do tonight and i trust that the lord will bless our hearts in the name of jesus christ i'll share with us a few thoughts that the lord put in my heart and i trust that god will help us hallelujah First John chapter 5. 
one of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ, especially pastors, preachers, is that we have lost the spirit of the word. And I say this with a very heavy heart. There's so much of talking going on. Sunday after Sunday, talking. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I'm not against the theological understanding of the word. I'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word. But if all we have to give people is just information, just rema in terms of new discoveries, we will never be able to produce a victorious army. Hallelujah. It doesn't take being spiritual to have information. It just takes being passionate. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to wait on God to get spiritual information. You see, the distinguishing factor, let me tell you something. Many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is a spirit that is behind scripture. One time the Lord opened my eyes. And when the Lord opened my eyes, I was in a vision and I saw a big, like an ancient door or a gate, if I will call it. And when I looked closely, I found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors. Actually a door. Many smaller doors. Are you following me now? And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. I saw the doors opening and closing. Meaning behind the letter, behind the grammar, Behind the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, there is a spirit waiting to transform people. The assignment, the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life. The spirit of life. Not just the spirit of truth. The spirit of life. He gives life to the information you are hearing. And then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now. So there is a lot of church going on. There is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings. But what we have done primarily as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing. So it's just about theological dissertations or Greek and Hebrew. Somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read Greek and Hebrew and express, you know... The words in Greek and Hebrew and bring new words. We think that the anointing is in the Greek or the anointing is in the Hebrew or the anointing is in the English or the communication. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. That's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed. There is a spirit. Listen. As I'm talking to you right now, there is a spirit that is compelling what I'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded. That's why you can bring somebody that is hardened. Somebody that will even swear that I won't listen to God, I won't do anything. And when he sits down under this anointing, from the prayer to the worship, there is a spirit. There is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on. And all of a sudden, you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn. Probably even insulting the meeting. And yet he's silent. And then paying attention. Listen. I want to convince you. That without the ministration of the spirit. Everything we are doing in ministry is useless. Get this. Get this. Get this. There is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the Spirit. Not just being full of the Holy Ghost. Not just receiving the anointing. 
the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something i am always aware that it's a privilege for god's people to be gathered here week in week out some persons have traveled from different states different regions to be here you cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a a presentation of bible or just a religious bible study it's more than that that is the reason why let me tell you something it's good to listen to tapes it's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of, of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress i absolutely believe that before jesus comes you see we've taught on the concept of immortality there's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of christ but what we have not taught people it is a scriptural concept the bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory that the mortal can become the immortal that the natural the terrestrial can translate there is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the record or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is Zoe. I know we talk a lot about it. Eternal life is not life after death. Listen, listen. Eternal life is not life. It's not the life you receive after death. Right? What happens after death is the consummation. The consummation. Right? Eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god 
it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means you're coming to christ or you're coming accepting the lordship of christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of god gets to you the bible says the life of god is hidden in the christ himself right the son of god so the way you receive that life is to receive the son of god that's why we preach that's why souls must be won so it's it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone it's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them i don't know if you understand what i'm saying now because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven you would have left immediately you gave your life to christ so the technology is of course it secures your eternal destiny but the bible says god gave us life but that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of God, so way, God's quality and class of life, you must embrace his son. Embracing the father will not give you that life. Hear me? Embracing an angel will not give you that life. Embracing revelation will not give you that life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must know what ministers that life. It says, and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of galatians chapter 3 right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you 
do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past it's not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with number one is the reality in christ the reality in christ The beginning of the experience of the believer in the New Testament starts in Christ. Outside of Christ, there is no initiation into the realities of the New Testament, right? The, the, the whole New Testament starts, the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Never alone. For with God, all things are possible. Outside of Him, many things are not possible for in christ we are complete for in christ we are perfected are you getting the point now but then there are realities in christ for instance we are seated in heavenly places the bible tells us in christ the other reality is the experience of that truth here and now the experience of that truth here and now you can call it the reality in christ and then the experiential reality the bible tells us all through the new testament all that we have become in christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the, the experience of it is manifest here and now that's not true paul himself speaking to the hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify right and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there Paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth. 
Hebrews, are you blessed tonight? I have the sun and I have eternal life. He who has the sun has eternal life. Two verses, seven and eight. Let's look at seven and eight. Hebrews two, verse seven and eight. It says, thou hast made him. Remember, Paul was quoting from David. It was David, the son of Jesse, right? The king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this. He said, to none of the angels, right? Has he said at any point, thou art my son, you know, this and that. He did not put the world in subjection to any angel. And then the Bible says, talking about man now. He said, you have made him or in... in, in uh, talking about Jesus now in his earthly work. It says you have made him a little lower than the angels. The word there was mistranslated. It's supposed to be uh, angelio, not necessarily like the beings, but it's an expression of God himself. Many times you see the Bible use the word angel to mean the very Lord himself. Is that not true? Many times in scripture. You will see that uh, and certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou hast made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right it says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing. That it, Listen, I hope you realize that in the New Testament, you are not anything until Christ is first it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So every time you see the Bible talking about man, find out whether Christ has become that thing. If Christ has not become it, because he must be the firstborn in all things. Meaning, the dimension that the Christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earth work of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this Zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should I want to receive the life of God is like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should I want it what is the excellency of God's life over my natural life are you getting what I'm saying so the Bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man Christ are you getting what I'm saying now I know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son 
you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is the father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again i just are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the holy spirit are we are we understanding what i'm teaching tonight So the realities in Christ and then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, right? For in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing that is not under him. At what point did this happen to man? Jesus himself said this. When he resurrected, what did he say? He said all hail he told the disciples he says all authority exousia delegated power has been given to me when he was in the earth all authority let me say something that looks controversial when he was in the earth all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him i hope you know absolutely that's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that jurisdiction. Is it not in your Bible? So when Jesus resurrected, he now said, now, the scope, a coronation has happened to me. Right? The same way it happened to Adam. That dominion mandate has been restored. And he said, now, all authority has been given it says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality it says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can't bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get there so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair 
I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Every sinner in hell today, from the time Jesus came, the price for their salvation has been paid. Why are they in hell? As merciful as the mercy of Jesus is. Are you getting the point now? So, there is a difference between realities in Christ and the experience. The realities in Christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the Zoe life that we have. But that does not mean because you saw it in Christ, automatically it will find expression here and now. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So you can read in scripture that by his stripes I am healed, but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life. Right? You've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances, the, the handwritings and, the, and all the things that have spoken against us, they've been nailed to the cross. But you are watching right there at 25, there was a miscarriage. Your younger sister at 25, there was a miscarriage. Obviously a demonic pattern finding expression. So did God lie? No. It's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in Christ to become our reality. Is God speaking to us now? So most believers just see, oh, in Christ, and then this is how they respond. God forbid, I have seen it in the Bible. I will never be sick. I will never be broke. And then you are getting broke, you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie, but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned, let me tell you sincerely, at how distant we are from the things we talk about, the things we claim, and the experience of the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is too much talk in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who god is what he can do we make such bold statements about god but when it comes to bringing god in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the bible says for instance jesus christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of God have said that? How many of us have been able to reproduce that reality? We must admit that there is something we are not understanding. We must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing. And let me tell you where we are missing it. This is it. Romans chapter 8. Let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously. And if we do not change, a lot is going to go wrong. Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh, do what? Do mind the things of the flesh, 
but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit verse 6 for to be what stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what dead but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so a man can watch oppression in his life and say no i went to school what what sort of oppression i mean if if you fail you fail it's not any demon anything you see that and then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness that all that you see is not all that there is there are many people for instance who look up and say there is no god because they are carnally minded they they reason from the sensual realm let me tell you the church of the lord jesus christ in a bit and i teach you principles we just finished having financial principles but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books a lot of people there is no man who walks based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who change the world in the bible 
were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say kai i beg jare we are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid yeah, i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from I got a testimony from um, a ministration we went for in Kaduna that, that, that blessed me. One of the pastors um, came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me. When I went for the meeting, a woman was pregnant. Brothers and sisters, watch this. At least biology tells us I'm not a doctor. There are doctors here. Um, so how the child is supposed to be formed. Eventually, for reasons they cannot explain. The child started turning mysteriously. No, the child does not turn mysteriously. Something turned it. Let me tell you, the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120. There are spirits that are millions of years. You call Satan a liar, you are right. You call him a deceiver, you are right. You call him a fool, you are very wrong. Satan is old. Are you hearing that? Absolutely. You know, sometimes... The way people just talk, me, God forbid, the right spirit can do this and that and that. It's not all about this. It's not, and, and while you are talking, the realm of the spirit is just watching you. How old? Do you know in Bible days, all of us are not even up to teenagers right now? Right? Yet, the ancient spirit of God gives us a prescription about how to live. And he says, if you want life and peace, be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while the, the Bible says, I am the truth. I am reality. When God began to build and train me,
God made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work the Holy Spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living God is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that God will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of God Jesus never became the Christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of God came he made him the Christ so when the Bible says in Christ it's not just saying in Jesus alone in Jesus yes but together with the spirit of life look at what we have taught people about faith today look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith right we teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo that's why it's not working let me tell you faith is a product of an encounter when the bible says faith comes by hearing do you hear what you read answer me you see we need to examine it was talk it was a spiritual language it was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word the days that are coming will be fierce the days that are coming will be spiritual right now have you seen the way the world is going lately there is no embarrassment about spirituality again is that true everybody is opening up it used to be in secrecy before but right now there is an open confrontation it's like everybody is saying kai i'm not hiding it again i'm gay simple kill me if you will kill me up it's not today it has been like that another person is saying it's not only you two of us too another person is saying let me tell you i've not been a real christian this is my charm oh yeah you see everybody is confessing one by one one by one the meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim of it someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two cores of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today
have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in 1 Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe chapter 15 or 13, one time when Saul, is that true? When Samuel told Saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly, is that true? He was coming to make a sacrifice. They gathered the people, it's in your Bible. And then Saul told, the, I mean Samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come. And they waited for him, they waited for him, they waited for him. After they waited for him, people were scattering. And the ego of the king, Saul, was, was at stake. And he said, Kai, this guy is not coming. Let me what? Offer the bond offering. As soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted. I, me too, I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said, because you have done this, the kingdom is taken to you. For God has found another man after his heart. Just for violating the priesthood. How many people violate the priesthood today? And they don't care. Right? All kinds of people. Any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right so that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about Uza in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uzzah for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you. You are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by right, this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings. You know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, this is what Apostle Joshua Selma would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. 
and then we'll start constructing a bridge we're saying that if i'm a prophet in five years we'll cross this red sea see that that's how we would have worked that's how much we have reduced god that's exactly what we would have done and then the engineers come and we say okay let's start doing everything let's start architects come let's start and then where are the kingdom financiers and then prayer department where are and then we keep praying and god says is that all to me and then after five years we say now you will cross the bridge slowly and while we are crossing we'll be singing choruses and when we reach there i will put a menu a monument prophecy walked into motion by apostle joshua selman shame on us because we call that the old testament we laugh at them we even say they are a shadow of us are you joking read hebrews 11 there are men who in their humanity we cannot even touch their shoes yet that's the old testament we are very quick to say it's old we have done away with it but we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done it's in your bible people invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies when was the last time you saw that when was the last time you saw angels pursuing boko haram with hailstones you are laughing it's a serious thing look at bomb blasts happening all around and there are men of god all around and we claim we're anointed they even put it on our posters when they invite us anointed man joshua selman shame on us let me tell you if this is what we think will bring christ back we are joking how many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems look at look at jesus jesus inspires me these guys who were with the guy that was crippled they knew that if they could only see jesus that situation would be over is it not in your bible and they said let's tear this man's ceiling we will explain it to him afterwards today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves is that true and do a lot of carnal things there is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and and, and 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 that of unbelievers if i stand right now and i minister to sam and he falls under the anointing people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft where did we leave our spirituality is it not in your bible that jesus with the divine life walked through people on a cliff they were trying to kill him he walked through them like a spirit where is that generation I wanted to show us a video it's just that um we, we we didn't have it i didn't discuss with the media would have shown us that video um of patricia king right i know they don't have it they may not have it now otherwise you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not The divine life we shout away we shout away but there is nothing so way about our lives if they shoot me i die so way right every ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me so way now i don't say this in a derogatory way i'm saying this to challenge us i guarantee you if we learn how to receive that so way life you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling and I bleed in my heart because I say, shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one koinonia We'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i will share with you some of my encounters 
when God began to work with me. Some of you, if I share it as you are seated now, you've seen me every day. You've even eaten with me, but you will not believe it. Because you say it's a lie. Encounters with angels. All kinds of spiritual encounters. Because I believe in him. I believe in him. I'll never forget the first time I had the audible voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you hear God, you must have faith. You see that? It's not about maybe I'm trying to calculate. You must have faith. Listen. At the, at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter do? Peter recognized them immediately. Had he ever seen them? Who told him? He said, what? I see three people. It's a privilege. That means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Mary was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says he has seen an angel, say, I beg Jerry, angel, where you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, Are they not ministering spirit? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give it the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. What are we saying? And the devil likes that theology. If it is Bible you want, Zondavan, keep publishing. New versions keep coming out. And we keep carrying the Bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding Bible and reading it, we are growing in the world. But we are becoming carnal. That's why death is rampant. It is that carnality. Do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us? Is that true? Witchcraft in the village is not a shock. An average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft. So if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear, he will believe it. But in the church, ah, if I disappear here now, now, in this place, finally the article will be complete. The article you have been writing, you will pay New Nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it. Confirm. Hey. Which is on suit. Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church calls spiritual growth prosperity. Since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard, we have left it and then remedied it with money. So when I come in with a nice suit and I come and say, am I, is the word not working? Let me tell you the truth. If that's what you think, you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of 100,000. Which, which pastor or which Christian can hardly do that in Nigeria? There are people lavishing resources. We have reduced ourselves and matched our spirituality. So if I come out with a jeep, if there are five jeeps that are lined up here, you say, man, God is in Koinonia. What? Five jeeps is here. Oh. In Bible days, men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit. One man will threaten a nation, not a politician, but Elijah, not in a radio station. He made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, me, I speak, there will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory. And I said, there will not be rain. And he went to bed. It was by sorcery, Jezebel found out he was the one. And she swore to remove his head. How many men of God have disgraced themselves 
on television how many men of god have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of god predicted that 2012 is is rapture huh how many you see we, we we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves it's gotta be more gotta be more it's gotta be more than this it's gotta be more gotta be more today people talk about the anointing but they do not even know what the anointing is no at all i tell you many people do not even know what the anointing is we have reduced god to prosperity because that's the only physical show of progress right we have left the harder ones like healings and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross those ones are very intricate you can't fake those ones so we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones we made money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working it's not working no we have to be, admit this thing and press into god part of my goals in life is to so align to the holy spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life i was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now right i think one of them is a miscarriage issue i'll minister to her shortly and then another person the question is if that happens in your church what will you tell them i know what you will tell them i know what you will tell them you don't have faith if you have faith you will provoke my oil there's no problem with my own end it's you that don't, you are liars we are must be a generation that can present christ to the world in his fullness i truly believe i will be part of those people with all my heart i desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression i have received the son and that means i believe that his life is in me but where is that life we are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me god taught me so many things secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room and i'll lie down there and the pages of my bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures i hope you believe it hallelujah we have reduced god we have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. People come for miracle service. We have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. It says he that has a son has life has life look at what jesus did an example of what we should become jesus five loaves and two fish he multiplied it everywhere he went he was doing good everywhere we go we are doing bad or at least average and yet we claim to have his spirit there are people who even brag and say i have the spirit of jesus without measure where is it 
where did, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure there is no sincerity in our pursuit of God we tell a lot of lies I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie I can fake it now and say there's somebody here you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise and because I did not minister in truth my lie will do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you how many people don't pray they come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense I am a prayer warrior but there is a there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer it follows their teachings it's like a spirit it's like a finishing on your words if you are a man of the altar it truly that fire is not just the shouting there is a communication of life how many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me? Many of us did not start like this. God is speaking to us. Many of us when we started, we were spiritual. We meant business with God. Eventually as we started getting some results in our lives, we have thrown the Holy Spirit out. Now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures, it means we are growing spiritually. Do you not see the need in our world today? There are people with HIV, cancer. There are people in need of the Zoe life that we claim to have. We claim to have Zoe. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. Then demonstrate it. He said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, This is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshipping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around and we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, like, like Solomon, an intelligence you cannot account for, all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i was sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives i remember a man called peter tan the first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, he was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. I just saw a man who was short and bald headed. After speaking to me, then I asked, who are you? And he didn't respond to me. He moved a while and then he turned and said, Paul. The first time I would see the picture on the internet, I said, this is the man I saw. Yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The name Koinonia was a revelation. It's not that I just sat down and said, Kai, what should we call it now? No, no. Right now, everything we do is sensual and carnal. The exact blueprint and the things that we are doing in this ministry were a revelation. 
a revelation by God. It was the Spirit of God that revealed to me the secret of church growth. Now, I'm not saying I'm throwing away materials and all of that. It's good. I've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves. But I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, let me have somebody here, just one person, anybody. You're a visitor, you're a pastor. Don't worry. You came all the way. Or you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh sweet Holy Spirit. I, I love you and, and all those things you say I, I love you you are my all in all you are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring the Holy Spirit was sent literally literally to continue the ministry of Jesus if you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life study Jesus in the Gospels the Holy Spirit is all that and more all that and more there was a time I said Holy Spirit now you have to what am i supposed to expect in your ministry and he told me he said study jesus that's what he told me everything you ever see jesus do to the disciples expect the holy spirit to do to you including revealing himself there was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said who do men say i am one day the holy ghost will ask you who do men say i am say yeah you are the spirit of this you are the and then he says who do you call me and you say i don't know you and he says now right my name is the spirit of life and to you that becomes a revelation at once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartations when was the last time you heard the voice of god not the one you are lying about the real voice of god when was the last time the presence of god came into your room in worship let me show you where we have thrown him away when was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately, in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense. They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in his presence? And you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit when was the last time you went to minister man of god and you stood in that meeting and when you finished people were shaking they could not explain what happened they knew that something heavenly like the dew of the morning came upon them they may not even remember what you thought but they knew they carried the spirit when was the last time because of your teaching, someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. And lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation. And people say you are over spiritualizing things. So God is not like that. This guy came all the way from where? From, from Jigawa State. To come for a meeting because there is a hunger. It's not a conference, it's not a convention, but hunger brought him. Right? God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. 
God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street, eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory. My ability to translate the realities in Christ. Let me tell you something. My, my goal, I've seen it in visions but they have not happened. I saw one time in a vision. Let me share with you one vision that I had. One time, I, I say it jokingly, but truly, truly I had a vision. And a ghastly motor accident happened ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden i appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah, may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days God bring us to this place. A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel. Because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do his best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing to see the power of God? Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now. I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, Man of God, your message was powerful. Powerful in what? I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that. I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming. Not just that a great man of God visited a place. That's not enough. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has this divine life. But the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the envoys of his presence, carriers of his glory, carriers of his power. Then you will see the eyes of the blind open. Then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped. Hallelujah. While I was ministering over the weekend, there was a woman who, I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something, and then the ear was blocked during the workers' conference of CDC. And I called the woman out. And standing face to face, I said, I can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth. One time Benihim was laying hands on people 
and they were falling down and our robbers looked at him and said benny don't just lay hands on them he said give them something oh fine can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now media is ready with the video okay media just just play guys maybe you can sit down and then after that you come up let's let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video and um it's a video of the supernatural is to spoil you and then i'll come up and, and and wrap up very quickly hi we're in san juan puerto rico where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place the lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways angelic visitation uh you very unique signs and wonders which will actually show you in a few moments, you'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances, miracles, all those good things with people deepening in their worship and, and loving the word of God. And so it's a, it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out. So we're at the House of uh, Restoration and Mercy with Pastor Dennis Roja, and uh, it's just awesome what is taking place. Pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met. He's so precious, has just a small uh, work and a very humble work. It reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things. Um, Pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in that he has a Bible open on the podium and oil just fills the pages of the Bible it's filling the pages of the Bible and uh, little gemstones little rough cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium and then as he squeezes the Bible the oil comes out copious amounts of oil this particular oil smells like myrrh it's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has and at the same time these kind of um, manifestations are happening in fact he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church off the beams onto the floor onto the seats and it's just non-stop continuous 
pouring out of oil. At the same time, these manifestations are taking place. Um, there's souls being saved. There's people being healed. Intense worship and prayer. Uh, uh, deliverances. People are being set free. This is truly a move of God. And that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto Him. That we'll get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prince. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away. The cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying. And they were uh, praying, and as they prayed, the Lord visited with an audible voice. And with the audible voice, the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the twelve uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the twelve tribes tribes of Israel and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way and so then the gemstones uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in in in, in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart and awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. Absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him, uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand. They think he's of a cult or whatever. But I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied 
in Acts chapter 2, he said, in the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvests. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to, is not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things. Thank God for these things. We just finished a financial series. But let me tell you the truth. God is looking for revivalists. God is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with. And I've made myself available. God knows with my entire life. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. Forth the spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth. Oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. Break forth, O oh spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. O oh seed. You ancient Zion's king, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you 
are mighty on your throne. Say, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Choose to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your mighty on your You are mighty on your You are mighty on You are mighty on your You are mighty on your You are mighty on your You are mighty you are mighty on your Lord. 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 Oh, sing. You ancient Zion's king. Proud Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. We invoke the ancient spirit of the Lord Most High. Lord, we are a generation that will embrace you. Break forth, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. Cry out, Kadosh. We cry out, Kadosh. Break forth that fountain of the deep. Shekatatata. There are impartations going on in this place. Leketeketekapa. Break forth, thou spirit of the Lord. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. We sing, O oh, ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh. We cry out, Kadosh. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep. The spirit of revival, apostolic signs and wonders, the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of power, the spirit of territorial impact, the spirit of encounters, open visions, visions of heaven. Break forth. Thou spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient giant's king. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Enough of nominal Christianity, enough of powerless Christianity, enough of faking it in the name of faith. There is a substance, and this life is in his son. The Zoe life, the divine life, the energy, the ability of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord that will bring awakening, signs and wonders, miracles and breakthrough. Cry out, Kadosh. 
you a mighty on your throne. We sing, you ancient iron steam. Cry out, Kadosh, you a mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. Cry out in our midst, oh God. Let the spirit of adoption cry, Abba Father, Abba Father. Let that cry of revival, of a ministry of power, a ministry of the spirit that can change lives. We will not deviate from the part of the apostles. We will not deviate from the part of the prophets. We will not deviate from the part of spiritual progress. We will not deviate. We refuse to bend. We refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne.
שבוע ושלום, שלום, you're welcome in my life, שלום, שלום, שבוע ושלום, שלום, you're welcome in this place, שלום. You must walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. your voice and pray one minute I am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of God are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power, the sway life. The power to heal, the power to alter the destinies of people, the power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly, the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly. I pray in the name of Jesus 
that may that life begin to manifest through your life that your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders that when men need God to show up they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory I pray for you may your words carry the power from heaven may your words no longer be barren and powerless may your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you may they bring healing may the words bring grace may they bring life like the river in Ezekiel 47 that everywhere it flows let the fish that was dead come back to life let the souls that are dead come back to life I pray that from today your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death wasting the time of God's people may you step into an unusual dimension I'd like you to receive what I'm releasing upon you is a ministration of the spirit many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk you will begin to see the demonstration not just in talk 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 with no results there are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there all of a sudden your territory begins to react because the Zoe life not just that which is in Christ alone that which has been manifest right here right now right here right now right here right now you will go back to your territories many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them you didn't plan to pray for them but you took the presence of God you took the life of heaven so where the life that controls heaven so where the life that upholds all things I'm praying for you that everything that has defied God in your life in the name that is above all names may that Zoe life come upon it right now may that Zoe life come upon every sick body here right now may that life of God let it come upon every dying spiritual life every lukewarm spiritual life the life that makes men doubt whether God is working with you or not I pray for you let it change from tonight you don't have to tell people you're a man of God carry that life carry that divine life may that life hold sickness from your body permanently this repeated stamina circle of nonsense that comes upon your body discern the Lord's body so that you will be strong discern the Lord's body Father I pray let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening and I stretch my hands and I pray for you whatever you came here with in the name that is above all names that is not consistent with the Zoe life whatever it is that is not consistent with the life of heaven right now I declare in the name of Jesus that it leaves your body and your life now I cause every pain I cause every situation that is attempting to challenge God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord put a testimony in your mouth that will verify before men that you are a carrier of his presence the power
power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow i think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if i refuse to transit in life no matter what i try to move it will come down back to my level are we together now there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself let me repeat there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself that means if you become the project of the growth there are many things you may not need to pray for again it's true in praying for yourself you will find out that you are praying for many other things your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself pay attention to yourself the development your transition and then you will find out that in doing so you are automatically influencing every result you desire let me repeat what i said earlier on while we're praying that greatness and success is what you attract to yourself not what you pursue what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming if i'm still the person yesterday today then i do not deserve to get any result different from that which i had yesterday the results you seek cannot come to this version of you they are to come but not this version of you the anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you the prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you so many times the power of restraint is not always demonic it is god waiting for the version of you that matches that result please listen and learn and grow this is spiritual intelligence not every restraint is an attack from satan not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic many times it can be god waiting for the version of you that is fit it is not because god cannot take the members from hundred to ten thousand it is not because god cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million it is not because god cannot take your grace from this level to that level but it cannot come on this version of you the bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin they are all called wine skins the difference is old and new you are still called a human being but the difference is the old version and the new version you are still called a man of god but the man of god before and the new man of god ah jesus said why seekest ye the dead among the living there was a version of me that lied lifeless you saw that version on the ground but it's no longer in the grave a version of me has arisen in the glory of the father not the one that walked the earth now without blood a version of me that lives by another life i learned this in my life and as a person i stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one think how hard it is to look for good friends think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships think how hard it is to look for information every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting the cheapest way listen it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times it is cheaper sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want but an adult who has grown 
just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick the things that are hard today are not hard it is your level that defines them so if you grow you will find out that they are not so the finances that looks like a monster of a realm lord when will i go out of this is only the old version of you is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter so it looks hard spiritually lord is it possible that i can step into this how will i start seeing visions what does it look like to see a vision will i be in myself will i fall down is it that i'm dying those are unnecessary questions just grow when you grow and enter those realms by experience you will have those answers there are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask it's a burden to ask every question what happens to me when i'm a teenager what happens when i'm 13 give me a detailed information of what will happen when i'm 14 years it's unnecessary just grow as you grow many times you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions let me ask you a question do you know where your clothes of 10 years were do you know where they are now can you remember giving them out no can you remember burning them up no can you remember packing them to keep somewhere no they left for these ones to come he said mystery you don't understand remember where your first phone is remember you didn't throw it remember you didn't sell it remember you didn't sew it but where is it many times we don't know the things around us are living things too they are governed by laws they live quietly and we do not know may the lord give us understanding that the things that we call dead are not dead they can hear and they can see they are more obedient to the systems of god than us are we together I never had to tell anybody stop giving me this kind of honorarium stop tearing 2a and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe that would be stupid and arrogant the key is to grow when you grow a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way are we together So many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them they were not designed to live they were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm if you don't like them move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire please listen to me this will give us intelligence there are many prayers we pray that are it's just the mercy of god that answers them they are not wise prayers they are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance many times the prayer is not take this away from me many times the prayer is take me out of this realm the realities are fixed they are there an heir as long as he's a child he says differed not from a slave though he be lord of all he says but he's under tutors and governors that means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around the issue is not to drive them away the issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again praise the lord yes another analogy and then i'll begin to teach on what i have tonight there are many primary schools i believe they still do it where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers is that correct and then when they get to a particular level they start to wear long trousers now imagine someone in say primary two goes to the teacher and say look i'm tall is something that came genetically and because of that it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser the rules will not change because of you but when you change you change the rules you don't change the rules by changing the rules you change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply all rules don't apply the same at every level it is true 
are we together so we seek to transit by the spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold listen to me look up please look up you're writing but look up if you do not pay attention to what i'm saying this is what will happen to you everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured so many times when you hear people speak you will interpret their speakings from your realm and based on your realm it looks untrue with all humility if in 24 hours nobody favors me is proof something is wrong at this level you see that yes the level god has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me this is the reality at this level are we together now yes once upon a time if i'm not favored in a year i'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not at the end of that year i say no this year it, it was not like that and then you pray and then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month you rise to a realm where it becomes a week if nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help something is wrong i will go for a retreat 24 hours i wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of god upon my life once upon a time i think something happened to my phone and there was no network i got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty i said this is something is wrong something has to be wrong in five hours my phone did not ring nobody sent a text something is wrong i off the phone and put it back and there the text i said this is it because that result did not look like my realm now listen please listen to what i'm teaching you there are levels where if you pray for one hour you must punish yourself hello this is not religion you truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life the daily servicing of your altar one hour is too small if you don't meet that target you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday why because before you finish thanking god for what he has done the time should have gone what god has done is to before you start listening and say lord let me name my blessings thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere thank you oh god because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh one hour is already covered there are people who don't have much to say thank you for thank you lord because i'm alive thank you because even though my father is alive lord here are my needs but there are things god has done to you in some realms it is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you now the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time you use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet and let your tears say thank you before you start talking that's why i'm telling you praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour there are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare what and what intercession and warfare because of the seriousness of where you are but there are realms that god has given you some level of victory intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving so two people go to pray come show two people go to pray they represent different realms one person enters and say father i give you thanks you are the lion of the tribe of judah this is the day or the night whatever time of the day that the lord has made i rejoice i give thanks Shut up, and straight you go into lord these are my petitions help me oh this is plenty the list is increasing lord help me at the point you start praying you start lamenting you are right at that realm you will find out that the person you went to pray with you will think he cannot pray this is what you'll be doing thank you jesus father i glorify you he's praying oh you are merciful you are merciful you are merciful and a song is playing lord you are merciful
and you are there praying and getting angry and saying this guy doesn't know what he's doing you are not at the same realm listen carefully listen carefully listen that person is taking out time later on you are exhausted you are thirsty you are tired you don't even know you have been praying and miss all around he knows you are praying and miss he's not correcting you because there is a provision of god's mercy that whoever is at that realm god should ignore his mistakes and answer him so you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers they are not a proof that you are correct the person standing here already knows you didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving you didn't even get to his court you are shouting around the gate but god came out and helped you that is not how he helps men he just came to help you now watch this this is if you understand you will now get what i'm telling you that your prayer life imagine that two of you come you you truly with without without a sense of pride two of you cannot be prayer partners it's not like you can pray together but you can't be prayer partners you can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up maybe belong to the same group because this guy is already he brings out his piece of paper and there's nothing to bring out you tell him all right pray and you lie down flat only to stand up after two hours you are not sleeping you know? it's part of the prayer time and the guy says god bros i'm tired i'll finish i need to go i'll come back later and he says, okay god bless you there are certain realms where you cannot pray with people there are things god will do and tell you that requires you alone with him so when people are there he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general and you have to remain behind because you know you and god have not talked yet people are there and you are praying generally oh lord thank you for everything okay may god bless you sir we are going to sleep and you tell them go and then immediately you go the atmosphere changes the holy spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm there are ways he cannot relate the the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people because sometimes as soon as he comes there you will do things that don't make sense you will walk alone and fall down and that's it you are in a vision and for the next 30 minutes you are there do you think that person will leave you alone he will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again so he will allow them go you don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying let that dimension come and meet me no you don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer you've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours everything in your life is paid for by everybody you don't know what it means to be attacked what commission have you been given what assignment what what is the devil going to attack you for it's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life nothing serious so you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go but there are certain burdens that when I, when they're on your head the time it takes me to pray for one department alone in koinonia will surprise you there are, when you know see listen the weight on your head determines how you walk if you are carrying a cup on your head you can even leave it and walk around if you are carrying a headpan you can walk around if you are carrying a destiny the walk is so slippery god must lead you on how to walk this is what people do not understand so this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms that's why you see me encourage people i as i began to grow in the things of god i found out that i cannot pray comfortably in the daytime my life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer the distraction that will come from my phone ringing i don't off my phone whether i'm on pulpit or my phone is if my phone is off i'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done you see that i charge my phone an average of twice every day i have to because of you do you know living is not general 
the concept of living is dimensional listen to me that means when you are tired of certain things certain experiences around you someone else is coming into that dimension so you are not going to say lord take away those things your job is to rise to the next dimension are we together now yes once upon a time i remember those days if there were 30 people and i was going to minister to them i would have to lay hands on everybody one by one it was very exhausting and i said god there has to be a better way once upon a time if god is talking to me and i see in the spirit that god wants to touch you i will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass that was it was not what god could do it was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do and i knew that if i continue that way what if i have 30 minutes to preach and god wants to touch 500 people i follow them one by one touch somebody in overflow three come back touch this how do you touch the people online and then i said god there has to be a way and he said of course there is a way for i am a man under authority and i say to one go and he goeth that your words can become you you don't have to move your presence can be poured into your words you can send it on errand backed up by the anointing of the spirit and it will produce the same effect and i said okay god what does it take let's go if you are interested now when you rise to that realm you will see it and then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering wow how does this thing happen if the holy spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now you see all i need to do is not just to speak it or say it you see that you agree with god it looks simple until you are taught what really happens you come and collect the mic and talk i will tell you when god wants to touch somebody your job is to just say it and you will be very surprised to see as if god doesn't love you so most of this prayer lord why did you disgrace me i went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm you went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered because you saw somebody and you said no abba this must happen are we together there are people who carry graces as soon as they sit down and begin to talk something about the realm and the dimension of god that they walk in will force you to pay attention they don't have to say keep quiet no there are realms where they say oh yeah keep quiet now praise god everybody listen but there are realms where there are other provisions some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you so you can see two men of god operating everybody's bringing his possibilities are we together yes to believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life carrying the holy spirit you are right but you are wrong people come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms listen to me and that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord there is a hill there is a level where you can rise to elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming and he called down fire on them he was sitting at an altitude physically but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit papa Iya deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say let me bless you i declare that before the end of this week you will be favored now he's speaking from a realm you will say amen it may not sound charismatic it may not sound apostolic nobody falls nobody rises but 
the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass not because you believe it for the sake of the position he represents to the body so you see him not say well do you have there are realms where you say have faith express i'm sensing unbelief you are stopping this thing from happening truly there are dimensions where god does a thing not just for his name's sake he does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels it's true that's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tight he will start receiving results of a tighter breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he said, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering in one week everything will dry because that thing will come his results will come back to look like his true realm do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes the animals did not want to be saved they didn't know how to be saved but they came under the covering of noah's ark it was built with food inside to sustain them the animals would come out after the flood like heroes but where they left alone they would die there are dimensions in the spirit and there are realities that means that if i want you to move to another dimension of results then i must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be there are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level there are certain levels of the blessings of the lord that may never be made manifest your capacity at that level will not allow god bless you there is no need for that level of blessing at that level are we together there are things you must be taught that means every time come look up please that means every time the word of god is coming to you it's not only edifying you listen very carefully it's not only informing you it's transiting you that means a possibility exists that you came here koinonia at a realm and by the time we're sharing the grace you would think because you wore the same clothes you are the same person going out immediately you step out you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you many of you especially men of god come here and you just sit for one meeting and at the end of it sometimes you don't even get to see me and you are prayed for and that's it all you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship and the first surprise is when you open your bible ah, ah, what is this again then you stand to pray and it will surprise you let me tell you another thing that will surprise you your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is koinonia worship team you took something more than you back to your meeting are you seeing that remember you didn't call them to tell them look this is where i went to this is the grace i carried you went quietly but the nature of that grace is like a software it starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered all of a sudden you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent for instance and you contacted that grace for excellence you come back with it you don't have to start teaching first you will find out that in a span of two months exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms they were called there is a grace that calls them they don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear there are ministries that no matter what branch you open even if they open the branch close to a mosque they must have excellent people it's not like they bring people from the headquarters the grace was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to walk to come 
there are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things but there are ministries that enter with some graces as soon as they enter there must be vacancy suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house and they demolish that house and it becomes a church the pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results please listen to what i'm telling you that means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere it becomes impossible for people to ignore you it's not you you have risen to a level that grace will begin to compel it will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out no matter where you hide something must happen to the point that if god if it's a grace at that level god has mandated that at that level any time you go you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged so you are humble and because you are in that place god that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there who knows you to come there so that he can announce you and then leave the grace on your life there are dimensions of favor that you can enter into huh that even if it's on a saturday night you speak over people they must be blessed even if it's sunday during service it's true it's true there are graces please listen to me there are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say god said even if it's not god that said it because of the realm you occupy he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back are we together that means it is possible for a man of god a prophet to come and see learn this a prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. But I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy. And a covenant that i have with god and i can look at him and say my friend um something fell down and you gave me look at this i bless you by tomorrow and god will take what it doesn't mean the prophet lied it is the implication of the realm that was introduced <laughs> believers hear this and grow so if you don't understand you may go back and say fake prophet you prophesied nonsense no the prophet himself even that office is in levels a prophet in this realm is not greater than a christian in this realm the realm which is a reflection of his work with god must bow listen the office that that man has as powerful as it is there is a realm of intimacy you can have with god that equals that office you are not a prophet but the level of dealing you have gotten with your result is the same result a prophet will get so when you stand side by side by with a prophet they will call two of you prophets you are not a prophet you have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office a point will come your members will not even know who you are 
he said this guy is a prophet but are you really a prophet this guy is an evangelist but you are prophesying more than a prophet and you say you are an evangelist you say god told me i'm an evangelist you started as an evangelist your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to and took you to a realm higher than that dimension that means it is possible for a man of god you offend to curse you in anger and truly it will happen but a man of god will come who is not a prophet not an apostle not anything but in a dimension of grace he has been given the power he will nullify that thing and say it is true based on this course you should die tomorrow but i hold your hands god look at him for my sake let it go it's true okay. i'm looking for the best way i will help you understand this thing tonight these are the dimensions that are at work in us that certain things can happen to people because certain people are there are we together yes all of these things you see are provisions that god put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results You can't believe that i've not even touched my message tonight i just came with a hunger and a burden let's see what i can touch i took the a part of what i want to share last week responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now people getting frustrated as to whether the word of god produces results or not many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery not boko haram these are people killing themselves now a man leaves his family and then they are called that he died left a note i'm tired of life and that's it and young people also killing themselves and those who are alive it's almost as if they are dead already depression teenagers having depression young people having high blood pressure all kinds of health related issues there is an answer i attempted to answer that question last week was it or the week before last that the reason the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching are we together i stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get and so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels self-inflicted frustration begins to come listen carefully and as a result people become depressed you hear people saying as old as i am I, I don't have a child or i don't have a wife or i don't have a husband or i don't have my own house can you imagine at this age i am still renting can you imagine this and that can you imagine at this age i have only three girls no boy you know and all of these kinds of things and i told us that it is because first the kinds of teachings please listen carefully the kinds of teachings that we have taught people we have taught people that spirituality and in many circles sadly that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things are we together so by the time i have by the time i have certain things for a prolonged period of time maybe a house a car and all of that i am perceived to not be growing spiritually are we together yes why do you still have this car after 10 years why are you still living here after 20 years so that pressure to do things to prove that the word is working when our, our expectations continually become disappointed then we are plunged into that state of depression are we together but then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it 
to help us understand it is important for us to get results and i want to talk um maybe just a few minutes our time is already spent on the fact that i believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms please listen the realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of god among many things because we have not learned thank you we have not learned that success is not something you pursue please say after me you do not pursue success you do not pursue greatness there is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness whether spiritually financially and otherwise that will ever have it it is not something you pursue please listen to me it is something that you draw it is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become and listen to me there are certain traits every blessed man every anointed man every influential man everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you listen there are a set of traits that individuals must possess you call it character you call it whatever it is there are belief systems say belief systems there are there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit like i said earlier to the realms where these things effortlessly let me tell you this every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something stop immediately did you hear what i said every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing stop immediately it may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual the psychological and the spiritual maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing this is rainy season no farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground why because part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil are we together now but if you try to till the ground by november december especially at this part of the country you're going to have a hard time so there are certain things we are trying to get is proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you is telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me so instead of running unnecessarily cut away and stay back and build the belief systems build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing and i tell you whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go it is true for finances it is true for ministry it is true for leadership it is true for the anointing it is true for revelation it is true for anything i want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight maybe just two three and we'll pray since our time is gone that i believe is pivotal to our entering this new seasons that the lord has spoken to us about there are many of us who can sense in the spirit that i am at the edge i am i've exhausted my current level are we together now that financially spiritually and otherwise but let me limit it to our uh, the things that pertain unto life the things that matter to our life our upkeep our welfare and so on and so forth because that is what is causing the depression i don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know god he would rather fast he would rather pray he would rather buy books but when you are unable to pay the fees of your children when you are unable to do well when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that the accumulated frustration can push you to a point do you know that in all fairness i think in the last one or two weeks i've gotten at least one text every day people just calling and saying apostle please you have to talk to me otherwise i've been sensing i've been hearing a voice say i should kill myself i'm good for nothing repeatedly from different regions and then i knew that this this is terrible hearing voices getting frustrated feeling my life cannot you know my life would not make sense 
the the latest of the suicide issues i got to hear was a man a father who had a quarrel with his wife this is a true story some of you may have heard it a man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him and told him how irresponsible how shameless how disappointed she was in him how sad she felt that she got married to him and told him is it that his children were also disappointed and the last they said was that the man went out he just left and that was it they thought he was kidnapped they thought he was killed they didn't see him for a few days and they thought he was just you know men and their anger until police traced down and they found out that the man had died and they traced that the death was suicide now if you trace i'm not talking against church but if you trace that man will have to be associated with a group a church a fellowship or some kind of spiritual platform that means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of god who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments are we together say i need results in my life it is true that results are not the basis of our confidence it is true that results are not the object not the motivation behind our pursuit of god and our walk in the faith however as i have said i will continue to say again that results among other things are a system of consolation results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws results are also proof in many regards that god is with you not all the time but many times rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god how do we know for no man can do these things so when god is with you there are some things there are some evidences attestations of his presence that must be there and the lord put it in my heart and i know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life financially and so on and so forth that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that god is faithful are we together so i want to share with us a few things that just take note of it we'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight hallelujah the first belief system that i want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well look up please is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them please listen all great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have cars houses certificates achievements as powerful as all these things are no truly great man especially in the kingdom derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things that means that when i buy a new shoe when i buy a new cloth then i feel more successful when the cloth spoils i feel less successful that's a terrible way to live are we together now the bible um i think that should be i hope is uh what scripture now is it luke chapter 12 it just came to my spirit let's look at it luke chapter 12 i believe it is jesus was teaching luke chapter 12 yes and verse 15 give it to us please quickly luke chapter 12 and verse 15 everyone please look up his projected here's what the bible says jesus is teaching now and he said unto them take heed 
and beware of what covetousness greed greed that's the word there greed it says for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what things which he possesseth that means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars is not in houses are we together now so you must bring yourself to a point where even though i'm trusting god for a car a house i'm trusting god for um advanced certifications i'm trusting god to go abroad i'm trusting god to increase membership i'm trusting god to have children and so on and so forth my life cannot be and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things you know why because these things vacillate they go up and they go down praise the lord I was sharing i think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday and um it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting um i traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone just gone completely and while they were still deciding for me what other phone i would buy to replace that one i decided to take the old phone remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure i throw away you know i dusted the whole thing and i got it back in shape and then when i went for the leaders meeting i could see the body language all the leaders oh not again you could see apostle you've left this you know and all of that and um i used the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what i'm sharing with you now imagine that i tied my sense of self-worth to a, an exceptional phone i will now begin to tell myself things that i think you are thinking Ah, that means apostles finances is going down this one that he replaced this phone maybe he sold it all because he is broke because he's looking for something now remember you are not thinking that it is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying myself worth to phones there are people who cannot leave their homes until they borrow certain things and wear there are people who cannot because they have created perceptions there are men of God and women of God who cannot be themselves. More than half of their life is not them. It's a dangerous way to live. Listen very carefully. I show you a quick way to suicide. Tie your self-worth to things. And sooner or later you find out that you will need a knife, you will need a hoe, a cutlass or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations. There are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from. So they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere, maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road. And the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional Harvard type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad. And now they need to see your mother or your father. And based on your belief system, you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing so you will call your mother your auntie say so just one of our relative that just came to stay with us it's, i mean even me i'm surprised now seeing her outside you think what i'm saying is silly except for the fact that it is true how many people will never be proud of even their homes where they live your family house yes i know that they use mud to build it but the mud is not inside your mind but simply because you don't want we have a slang that our generation called this call it falling your hand correct how will i take these people in my department my departmental people want to greet my parents how will i now take them to a house that is smelling the there's humidity even inside the house the carpet i mean everything there are roaches flying around i don't want to be associated with that less the person who wants to marry me who has been perceiving that i'm a lady who was born inside an airplane may now have to make up his mind and change his perception let me advise you and let me encourage you i have a responsibility over you listen to me if you tie your self-worth to anything outside you get set for a shock in this life hallelujah 
god forbid but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for koinonia i would stop a bike outside quickly and say mr man please take me i'm late and and you know members can rob this they'll say my apostle the servant of the living god you know they they will rub it in and make you say bike stop stop let me just go back home tell them i'm not around if you need things to validate who you are you are in trouble because you will never have enough things that's why we seek to change phones listen let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself not that it is in the acquisition of these things that's why we are disappointed now i bought the phone now i i got the new hair now i got the clothes i got the designers i expected you to notice it and commend me and you ignored me so frustration starts are we together now did you not notice my perfume have you not noticed that i've changed perfume what is my business i'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere did you not notice i changed a car did you not notice i moved to a house have you not noticed that levels have changed i will never tie anything my self-worth to anything no matter how great they are i tell you the truth they are mundane things this teaching may not be popular but it's the way of peace it's not teaching you to be a mediocre it's giving you rest rest you've heard me say it again anything that is what's taking my life on i put it inside me god holy spirit quality information anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention people's vehicles spoiled and they they were too embarrassed to go to work why because they say ah Ogasi you or your car spoiled my self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in Christ and what he has done and what you now possess so the first thing I'm advising you and listen to me koinonia I have a responsibility over you and over those who are following the mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things you bought a new watch how much is this watch 300,000 Wow you are wearing a 300,000 watch that's somebody's salary for one year you are not a small man oh, and you enjoy it foolishly not knowing that that watch can be stolen it it can spoil it can leave you god can instruct you to sew it many things can happen around that watch why will you tie your self-worth and then you find out that you are no longer with the watch and then you are just looking someone may be noticing that i'm not wearing the watch uh, well let me just explain god asked me to, who asked you the, nobody is thinking about you as they are looking at you they are thinking about their problems ah, where will i call my mother now oh god let someone send me for an era recharge card and you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture say i reject bondage shout it i reject bondage ah you used to you used to wear a hair of ten thousand before what happened i noticed you have started wearing the one of one one five and two is everything all right with your finance what is your business does the one five oh not stay oh please I noticed you used to bab every two weeks but in the last one week i'm just a concerned brother it's like a, you is that you don't have money if you don't have money use bab just just clean it let it shine let it shine let it shine for god's sake don't be under pressure and say i must do this i must be this if you come to my house and meet me drinking gary i will only put it in a better cup if i honor you 
but Gary, you must drink. I will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you. No. Listen to me. Be healed of this societal pressure. And let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit, they put pressure on you, you must fry plantain, fry chips. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, even if you don't have anything, put cold water in the fridge and serve. Do not derive self-worth. Don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car. Just because you bought a new house. Um, just to let you know that levels have changed. Um, I got a job with NMPC and for starters, they gave me 1.5. And uh, because of that, I want to see Apostle. I don't have the time to join the queue. Can you please fast track the thing? I have a seed and the seed is a sizable one. What do you think I am? That's why it's good for a man of God to be blessed. Because when you are blessed, you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size. No. No, we know man after the flesh. Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ. And what Jesus has done in my life so be proud of yourself and be proud of your level if it's only one shoe you have wear it every Friday wear it every Sunday let us see it as a testament so that the day God blesses you anybody who says it was a mistake you will not be the one to answer I'll say I was a witness I saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world Are we together? Sisters, don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things. Just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life. Say, you know, I'm this and that and that. My father is a governor of which state? What is your surname? Are the states in Nigeria many that we don't know? My father is a this. My father is a king. My mother is a this. I'm a prince. As you see, I'm just a humble one. No. Whether you are a prince or not, that's not anybody's business. People should honor you because of genuine character. That you are a man of character. That you are a woman of character. is a nobler reason for honor than things. Number two. Ready? Koinonia <laughs> is growing. Praise the Lord. You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people poor christians especially who have an advantage of the holy spirit if you have an advantage of the holy spirit and he's watching you poor there's something you are doing to him he's there as the advantage in your life greed many believers are greedy it's shown in their givings you started giving 10 naira as a student as offering and now you are director you are giving 20 naira. Is that the measure of the lifting of God upon your life? No. Greed. Closely related to greed, please write. Selfishness. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. Please listen very carefully. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. What is selfishness? Look at this. Come, doctor. Selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad, you do not care what effect it creates on others. 
selfishness is not desiring good things it is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others that means that i so want to get to this speaker i don't care if i match and i match and i put dr emeka i just want to reach there there are many of us who are like that many nigerians are like that and i'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere it's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are they are wanting to rise causes for others i want to be a ceo i will kill anybody if possible to be that ceo me myself the language of our generation is what is in it for me once there is nothing in it for you it's not your business no it's not the language of great people great leaders the great leaders are selfless people great people are selfless people the bible says looking up to jesus jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself please listen to me i've taught us that it is about us but not all about us when your life becomes all about you then you are in trouble this ministry was founded upon selflessness truly selflessness many of you as you are now god is helping you but you want to so grow and rise there is none of what our children here that is going to school because of your school fees you are waiting till the day you become a millionaire some of them their school fees is two thousand three thousand ten thousand you are so engrossed you can package hundred thousand and bring let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast but a little child can come and hug you and say uncle i'm not going to school let me join am i your, am I your, your father you see that selflessness selflessness the selfishness in our world is so terrible so terrible people will do anything and not mind they will they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up break your 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 what they call it your side mirror and just on you and say sorry as if that's the solution to it i'm in a hurry to wear how about many of us here you don't care if your siblings rise listen you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life but you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating you can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you ladies listen to me because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset it is always about me my money is for me my everything is for me someone can give you two thousand error recharge card as a seed you will flash him to call you so you say thank you what do we call that greed and selfishness listen listen to me many of our parents today many of our parents respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here many of our parents this is what closed their door they were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out and when they got to a place where they needed help there was nobody to help them now when they were in the civil service some of them got to the echelon of their their pursuit they never raised anybody all they were concerned about is me i must sit down and eat and now they've retired no young person can come and say sir in 1995 it was because of you i got a job today i've come with a seed to say thank you let me tell you sincerely speaking many of us here are young people but let me tell you if you are old and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you it's a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed are we together last year during my birthday the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children they write me letters all the time they write all kinds of things but i love their letters and i read every one of it 
they draw love they write jesus on it they try to draw my face they write you have been a nice daddy thank you those things mean a lot to me than chicken than whatever it is you eat those things and go to the toilet and it's on but those things are a reflection it's a sign that when you are old those ones they can come to you and say make sure this person never cries even in old age you say but it's not your father he said he was better than my father if nobody can remember you for good it's a sign that you are digging the grave already even while you are alive please hear me great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want it's not all about you everything god gives you people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of god and with all humility even if it's the crumbs from the table it will reach them i look at us please look at me i can tell you why god has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity he has discerned the extent of greed that in your being blessed nobody nobody many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody they know that you are looking for something whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for for something it is not you to give i think if i stop giving it may affect me i may even fall down and die But you know, Apostle, we are not very blessed. It's you people that God has helped. That is the talk of a greedy person. If you can't give clothes, there is food. One day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say, I may not do much now, but I am breaking the spirit of greed. Please come and eat in my house. They come the next day and say, no, no, no. I was only training myself. Don't come every day. Don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted. You do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad tell them please at training our when when i get to that realm you will come but for now come and eat are we together say in the name of jesus the spirit of greed the spirit of selfishness i curse it from my life many believers are like that two women or two men can be talking i can be talking with dr emeka and in his presence i will bring out two thousand naira buy egg roll and minerals and hold it while we are talking and finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it Hapa. it's inhuman to live like that giving is living you must trust god for grace don't wait till you are a millionaire i'm telling you listen this these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional god will never trust a greedy and a selfish person when he sends a word to jacob is because jacob can let that word reach israel if god gives you money can god look at many people in koinonia today and say instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees i know they are coming but can i bless you and then they rejoice the angels rejoice and say these children have gone to school why because one person was blessed what does it take for god to give you a job what does it take for god to turn the economic tide in your life it takes more than studying business let me tell you it takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place we're not just men of god we're not daft people we're economically sound we're financially sound but i tell you this much more than just the value you give who you are is higher than what you do i had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man such a rare privilege and i met him and i asked him one question i said sir let me ask you one question i said what kind of people will you be looking for at this level and he looked at me and smiled and said apostle you are very smart i said thank you sir my mind was just on the answer 
and he said should i tell you honesty he said yes and then he kept quiet and took a deep breath he said i will answer you in a story and then he told me a story and at the end of it he said let me test i already told you you're intelligent what kind of people do you think i'll be needing i said trustworthy people he said that's it the morale of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough he said every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him and 95 percent of them were christians recommended by pastors he sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people because of greed 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 let them know that the word is working so you steal everything you steal cement you steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up do you not know that when truth was buried it came out of the grave hallelujah there are very very listen let me teach you this if you are a businessman here please more than value and productivity look for selfless people when you find selfless people you have not found cheap people you have found priceless people our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself let me quickly cash in on the moment while i have the time some of you looking at me now as born again as you are let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered if i count it you will behave because it's counted but let me just scatter it and leave you you will first check whether there's a cctv look around and pray in tongues so that those outside would think there's prayer going on and you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket who do you think is watching god alone demons angels the demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of jesus <laughs> are you joking please i pray for you in the name of jesus that the grace to be selfless may that grace come upon you there are nurses that are not selfless is that not so in your hospital there are doctors that are not selfless a woman comes she wants to give birth and they're acting as if please madam if you would die self, just die there whereas that woman has been trusting god for a child for 12 years and you see the greed and the selflessness are you from my tribe are you from my place are you from here no selflessness i these are the things i pray for for myself these are the things that have brought blessings to my life that you show god i told you that the lord told me if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there are many of you that desire anointing apostle anoint me and i look at you it's not even god even me i know the things you will do if that anointing really comes you will first run to your enemies and say you are finished you don't know what i'm carrying just know it's over and if you think i'm joking you you will die tomorrow you you will die on thursday by the time you kill people in a row in one week you say what this grace is powerful even me i didn't know it's this powerful listen to my message can god trust you go and listen to it please media let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message can god trust you powerful message many times it is not just in the fasting and the prayer as powerful as it is is positioning yourself god let me be your treasurer on earth the last treasurer betrayed you here is a faithful one and god is saying can i trust you say yes trust me god gives you five hundred thousand. your spirit is still sound your head is still sound and he sees how you bless people 
you say you did this for me let me take it to another level whereas all your prayer from your small mind is god give me five million oh god give me five five million will change my life based on what your mind told you whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust and giving you the keys to the hearts of nations lord give me the grace to prophesy as soon as god gives you that grace you just say i found my stream of income i'm not wasting my time for anything again i will never prophesy free i it didn't it was not i got the anointing at a cost and god says you see your heart you were there fasting i warned you and now that you have the anointing and because it is valuable people will now begin to pay hundred thousand per prophecy thirty thousand Per prophecy and the truth is that the grace will work and while you are paying and paying you are happy you are building houses collecting people's houses collecting people's cars and doing all of that god is watching you he's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm so you will go back again and say lord i'm here he said it's not me you are talking to it's not me you are talking to i gave you a grace I saw what you did with that grace Lord give me the kind of apostles grace and he tests you 20 missed calls by 1 a.m. you don't answer any one of them the 21st one you call and say let me tell you something I'm a human being too I sleep I this I that I hate you don't do this to me again the next time you do and God says look at the grace you want listen 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 please look at me selflessness is an unusual virtue that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike modok says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of God some of you have vehicles you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and God is watching and you already say no God I'm trusting you to give me one car that I saw on my way going somewhere and God says you think I'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may God never give you anything that you will regret yeah. did you hear what I said may God never give you anything that you will say I feel pained that I gave this man this maybe I'll stop here Let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable are we together and there's nothing wrong with that we call it spotlight is the slang we have for it some of you i just mentioned spotlight you're already laughing i mean you just imagine yourself there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that pride is one thing that will make God fight a man God will not fight a man because of sin God will not fight a man even because of disobedience 
but pride it says that god gives opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble one of the one of the one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth and achievement please listen wealth and achievement every time god warned people of pride it had to do with wealth and achievement deuteronomy chapter 8 you don't have to turn there just read the bible says let it not be that when you have what built houses and done this done this and that achievement that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me this and then verse 18 says but thou shall remember the lord thy god for it is he it is he leave the remaining statement it is he he is the focus humility is not refusing what god has done humility is not simplicity humility is acknowledging god as the basis of every achievement that you have outspokenly in your body language and in your conversation god it is unto you apostle joshua selman the great man changing people ah a man can receive nothing precious people except it is given to him from god it's very difficult for some of you to say this thing why because you feel if i say it i'm taking away the spotlight from me pride there are many people there are many parents who would have been lifted but pride pride they will not be good examples look at me let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of god to lift you you are not going to be a good model being blessed you are the best christian model at your current state if you rise higher than that especially financially you will kill people some of you if you rise financially your mother your father your siblings and everybody they will kneel down to greet you every morning simply because you paid rent simply because you paid this i failed in life and people i think i'm a failure but now that i've succeeded i will rub it on the face of everybody no that is the way of the world we are kingdom people can you be blessed and still remain humble can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievement <laughs> just to just to meet you as ah um um just to let you know are you aware that i just came back from lagos and uh i flew in you came that's the most important thing whether you crawled whether you drove whether you flew avoid some of those those talks i was in the plane and ah you know i was uh, i was i don't know have you ever sat down in a business class because i'm trying to explain something i don't know if you can understand you see let me tell this is why many great people are persecuted in the church because we don't know how to keep quiet success is already loud on itself if you dare rub it in members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you let me tell you something it is difficult to criticize a humble man even if you are right humility paralyzes you you what will you now say are we together i'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where god is lifting many of us many people are not humble they are only broke by the time the blessings of the lord comes you will see the attitude the pungency of pride pride is one thing that is a destroyer even if you kill satan and all the demons proud people will still die there is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me then i hold the light and shine it i'm proud to be the usher shining it to say people thank god for joshua selman and everything that's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything i become uncomfortable when i'm preaching i can be bold i can be this if i drop this mic now and you start saying well there is a man here that thing shade was doing you see that i felt like dying if i had my way 
i will just send my picture to stand and represent me but some of you you like it as joking as it is some of you as you are sitting you're ah let my month come if they give me this opportunity i will first cut the cake and leave back the knife let them snap me alone before everybody comes the urge the urge the urge to outshine huh in in a in a secular business way that's all right but in a kingdom way the the urge to want to just receive vain glory please you must trust god to conquer it conquer it conquer it it's one of the big restraints that many of us may face you know many times i pray for you sincerely i do and i ask the lord i say lord continue to bless and lift my people i'm a, among the many things i get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies god doesn't directly say pride tendencies vulnerabilities things that can happen that you are not aware of if you ever think money does not have power think again did you hear what i said think again money has power put money in a ring with any boxer it will beat him out before he enters money is powerful anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful money is powerful but when it begins to come with it it will solve other problems and create others hallelujah can you let jesus be seen in your life can you be lifted that 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down not to say if you push me if you push me if you push me please i don't have time for thieves now what happened god has blessed me you're laughing but these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts so that they will know i'm a big man so that they will know i'm rich well for your information that jeep you are seeing is my car for your information just to let you know that uh, i'll be in uk on tuesday quickly touch the u.s thursday and uh, i'll try to make coin on you i'm still coming god is watching all those things it's not a testimony you are sharing there are many things that are not testimonies testimonies the goal of testimonies is edification not announcement edification so the part you stress in a testimony is the edification truly let me tell you something i vowed a vow to god and i say lord whatever you will give me that will make me proud i'm praying in advance no matter how i cry don't answer me don't answer me humility is a powerful thing can you have access and still be humble can you have increase and still stay humble are you hearing what i'm saying don't say we're like that in our family it means all of you need to hear this message it doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that We are like that if we have it we show it if we don't have it we don't show it but it ought not to be so jesus is teaching when you come into the kingdom you don't come with the baggages of your belief you drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom there is nothing as powerful as being blessed and being humble your life is a message in action in action and it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account i have 1.5 million oh well now it has gone back to 1.4 i use hundred thousand and while you are talking you may believe you are impressing everybody whereas scattered among you there are accounts that if you see you will not wake up again you will not wake up i'm telling you it's not the you there are some things you act like you are used to seeing no there are things you are not used to seeing you will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with and yet people can have those things and be quiet moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night 
the grace of the prophetic was so much in him yet Moses was quiet part of his spirit was taken out they called elders who had followed him 70 people received the spirit of Moses nobody could keep quiet ah, I thus hear the Lord from morning till night and Moses was watching them Moses said this thing that is making you make noise times 10 of it is what was in me yet I was quiet can you have so much and be quiet can you know so much and be quiet there are people if you know so much when someone is talking once is wrong let me correct you sorry that's what i studied no no that's my feel i won't keep quiet it is powerful to know so much there are times that i listen to people as they talk and many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense spiritually and even intellectually i know a lot more than what they are saying but i honor them because they have more results than me i keep quiet and i just hear. you understand what i'm saying i say yes sir yes sir and what the man is saying is, is is quite honestly nonsense and i just keep quiet and i listen he said ah and sometimes they are, they are flattered they are impressed because of the whole thing. just listen and say yes sir and keep quiet not sir with all due respect i don't want to talk while i was just keeping quiet but sakai this your thing is outdated no you lose many opportunities like that in the name of jesus may this ministry even with the things that god is doing bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled that the time will come when people will pack cars that if you want to see it you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who people will just be rolling rolling on the ground it's after the grace you will just see a tiny lady say let me rush home you will think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you plan to buy in 30 years and you say that's the owner i said that's the owner that lady is a ceo of something he said was she not the one rolling up and down that's a message koinonia extended extended through your life don't brag around and move around making noise i have this i have that listen when you are under pressure to keep saying things it's a sign that you have complex yourself you must be healed be strengthened when god blesses you you cannot hide light we are going to pray our time is up but we must take two or three minutes to pray more than having things these are the things you must become and your life becomes exceptional lord take away my tendencies take away my vulnerabilities take away the things that can happen to me when i rise to certain levels i desire you to take me to certain levels of blessings but lord i know that there are things that are enshrined within my heart that will will limit your workings in my life is someone praying tonight lift your voice and pray tonight's teaching may be a hard teaching but pray is a maker of great people pray i owe everything to you oh god all that i am and all that i will ever become let it be unto you let the name of jesus alone be glorified alone be glorified when men see me may they see you may men not look at me and forget about you may men not look at my results and ignore jesus that when men see my life it will remind them of who god is is someone praying tonight hallelujah the last prayer point because of our time please i want you to pray this with all your heart pray and say lord don't restrain your hand from me i am trustworthy you can trust me with the wealth of the kingdom you can trust me with access you can trust me with influence i will not bring your name i will not bring reproach to your name through the pungency of pride that will come out i will let men know no matter how you lift me i will let men know that jesus is the reason 
for who and what I am unashamedly consistently intentionally but Lord do not withhold your hand of blessings in this season you are lifting men lift me do not withhold new wines from coming upon my life pray for yourself pray for koinonia let it please you oh god to trust me with everything you are pouring in this season wisdom grace lifting anointings access everything i receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord in one minute please hold the hands of somebody close to you we are going to pray for koinonia as a ministry lord as you lift us you are giving us a voice across this nation you are giving us a voice many of you have seen the mighty things that god is doing in and through this ministry god has made our song a praise to the nations and god has so exalted himself i like you to pray pray and say lord as you lift us we declare that never will there come a time in this ministry where men will see your walkings and forget about jesus lift your voice you love this ministry pray pray online continue the lifting oh god let the teachings continue to transform men let it enter the hands of people we declare it's a vow and a covenant that jesus and him alone will be glorified as you announce us as you lift us as you honor us in the name of jesus we decree and declare pray for everyone connected to this ministry pray for every business pray for every career pray for every achievement and every achiever pray for every business person pray for every ministry connected to this ministry pray for our children father we declare that in this season that you are announcing and lifting men Jesus alone will be glorified hallelujah I pray for you that the things that I share tonight will mean a lot to you if it is lifting in the kingdom you truly desire Please, when these messages are uploaded get them again and sit down don't say they are simple these are the weightier matters of the kingdom you settle down and listen and pray personally this prayer point you should go back to your secret place and develop it and cry and say lord help me i have defaulted in this area and that area it may be why you're outstretched and you started but something restrained your hand now i know it's not just demons let the heavens be open pour out increase pour out influence i told god as far as my life is concerned please don't have any fear blessing me don't have any restraint blessing me because for as long as i'm alive breathing I will ensure that in and through my life that Jesus is glorified you must adopt that you come from families that like to know who is doing what so that you earn respect you must kill that spirit don't say I'm Yoruba don't say I'm Igbo don't say I'm South South don't say I'm Hausa don't say I'm Middle Belt throw away those things and say I'm a citizen of the kingdom and I must subscribe to the way that kingdom people behave they say this is what you should do but i say this is jesus teaching they say this is what you should do but i say this is the way father i stand representing this ministry and representing the things that you are doing even in this nation and around the world i know that in this season you are truly looking for men you can trust and lord you have put it in my heart as a burden to teach your people the spiritual traits that we must inculcate that position us to be lifted in our places of work in ministry in business in career and even in destiny i have shared some of these truths with your people and i cry by the god of heaven that you will cause this word to be effectual in our hearts 
whatever it is that our lives have projected that have made you restrain your hand of blessing your hand of lifting your hand of honor we pray tonight by the mercies of the god of heaven let your hand be outstretched once again to lift to bless to anoint and to take us to realms unimagined in the name of jesus i pray specifically over the issue of finances we're in a season where so many people need the hand of god in this area i've told you it's a cost to chase money look for money it will distract you and take away useful time from your life i pray that any of these things that you have assumed in your heart that will make god to restrain his hand to bless you or bless your family by the mercies of the god of heaven may mercy be shown you this night in the name of jesus and i pray for you sincerely and truthfully may you step into blessings and into realms you never even imagined you will step into may you step into anointings may you step into access may you step into honor may you step into influence may you step into open doors in the name of jesus christ i declare may kings entreat your favor in the name of jesus that even the blessed will call you blessed the anointed will call you anointed in the name of jesus christ everything that represents shame and reproach in your life and in your family i stand right now in the name of jesus and i declare that it leaves your life like smoke before the wind whatever god has given you that is becoming a cause in your life right now i interject with the mercy of god and i pray that nothing god has given you will be to your heart nothing god has given you will be to the heart of those around you when god is finding people to lift in this season may he find you when god is finding people looking for people to honor may he find you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen give jesus praise